On July 6, 2009, a 200-ton tower crane crashed through Liverpool's Chandler's Wharf after a single decision to cut steel bars destroyed the foundation, triggering England's $20 million crane collapse. Investigators uncovered foundation fraud intended to save time, unleashing catastrophe on a city in the midst of a construction boom. How did corporate shortcuts turn regeneration into disaster? And who was really responsible? Liverpool in the summer of 2009 was a city transformed by ambition. Just a year after being named European Capital of Culture, its waterfront bustled with cranes, scaffolding, and the relentless noise of progress. Old docks and warehouses gave way to modern towers, hotels, and apartments as developers raced to meet the city's rising expectations. Among these projects, King's Dock Mill stood out, a 50 million pound scheme promising a 150 bedroom hotel and nearly 200 luxury apartments on the historic Tabley Street, once home to the Porter Brothers flag warehouse at the heart of the Baltic Triangle. The Baltic Triangle, long known for its industrial past, was now reimagined as Liverpool's creative and residential frontier. King's Dock Mill was designed to complement the nearby Echo Arena and BT Convention Center, both symbols of the city's new era. The site itself dominated the skyline, with multiple tower cranes rising above the rooftops and hundreds of workers moving materials at a steady pace. Every day brought new deliveries, new deadlines, and new pressure to keep the schedule on track. Bomer and Kirkland, the main contractor, brought nearly a century of experience to the job. Founded in 1923, their reputation rested on delivering large-scale projects across the UK. For a scheme of this scale and profile, their presence was both a promise of quality and a statement of intent. The company's portfolio included major commercial, residential, and public buildings, making them a logical choice for a development that would reshape the city's southern waterfront. With so much money at stake, every week of delay carried enormous cost. The 50 million pound budget left little room for error, and the pressure to deliver on time was felt at every level, from boardroom to building site. The city's regeneration was not just about concrete and steel, but about civic pride and economic momentum. For contractors, the challenge was to balance speed, cost, and safety under the watchful eyes of investors and city officials. In this climate, every shortcut promised a competitive edge, but also carried silent risks that would soon come to define the fate of King's Dock Mill. The Wolfcran 500B Tower Crane, standing 79 meters tall and weighing 200 tons, was a feat of German engineering designed for the pressures of modern city construction. Its eight counterweights, totaling 56 tons, balanced each lift with precision. The machine's massive reach and strength made it a fixture on high-profile sites, and its presence at King's Dock Mill was a mark of Liverpool's ambitions. Yet beneath this imposing structure, a hidden flaw had been introduced, a flaw that would soon become the focus of forensic scrutiny and legal consequence. During the investigation, health and safety executive inspectors uncovered a deliberate alteration at the heart of the crane's foundation. The original engineering drawings called for each concrete pile to be reinforced with a full cage of steel bars, capable of handling the immense forces generated by the crane's operation. In practice, however, the critical reinforcement had been cut away. Where there should have been dense steel, investigators found just four or five thin rods per pile, nowhere near the standard required for a crane of this scale. This modification, carried out so the crane's feet could sit directly on the pile tops, left the foundation fatally weak. Bingham Davis, the structural engineering firm, had signed off on this change without providing the calculations or independent checks expected for such a high-risk structure. Bomer and Kirkland, as main contractor, accepted the shortcut, bypassing the safeguards that should have protected workers and residents alike. The health and safety executive's forensic analysis concluded that the foundation, as built, 
could withstand only a fraction of the loads it was supposed to bear. The evidence was clear. The collapse was not a freak accident, but the direct result of a cost-driven decision to ignore basic engineering principles. In court, the scale of the shortcut became impossible to defend. Bomer and Kirkland faced a 280,000 pound fine and 200,000 in costs, their cavalier attitude toward safety condemned by the judge. Bingham Davis, by then insolvent, was fined a symbolic 1,000 pounds. In the aftermath, the case became a turning point for the industry. While no new law was passed, the expectation for robust, independent checks on crane foundations was reinforced throughout the sector. The Chandler's Wharf collapse now stands as a textbook warning. When shortcuts replace sound engineering, the consequences are measured not just in money, but in lives and lasting damage. At exactly midday on July 6, 2009, the King's Dock mill site moved with routine purpose. Construction teams worked across the floors while the Wolfcran 500B tower crane stood silent and ready. Its luffing jib angled over the city. Then, without warning, two sharp bangs echoed across Tabley Street. Workers froze. The sounds were unmistakable, metal giving way under strain, not the usual clatter of a busy site. In those first seconds, the 200-ton crane began to tilt backward. Its base, once anchored by four concrete piles, no longer held. The entire structure, stretching 79 meters into the air, lurched toward the Chandler's Wharf apartments. The collapse was not slow. With the foundation suddenly unable to resist the forces at play, the crane's massive weight shifted off balance. The eight counterweight blocks, together weighing 56 tons, broke free from their moorings. These blocks, each the size of a small car, fell straight down. They punched through the apartment building's roof, smashing through six floors in a matter of seconds. Concrete, steel, and debris tore through the main stairwell, leaving a gaping wound in the structure. The counterweights, designed to steady the crane, became instruments of destruction as they descended unchecked. On the ground, dust and fragments filled the air. The force of the impact reverberated through the building and out into the street. For those nearby, the sequence was both immediate and surreal. A machine built to lift the city's skyline had instead collapsed into it. In less than a minute, the fate of Chandler's Wharf was sealed. The physical consequences of a single decision, made months earlier and hidden beneath concrete, played out in full daylight. The inevitability of failure, once the foundation was compromised, left no time for intervention. The disaster had unfolded exactly as the laws of physics dictated, with devastating clarity. Ian Gillam had climbed into the cab that morning as he had done countless times before. By midday, his world had changed forever. The force of the collapse hurled him from his seat, sending his body 50 feet through the air before slamming him onto the roof of the Chandler's Wharf apartments. First responders found him conscious, but gravely injured, surrounded by shattered concrete and twisted metal. He was rushed to Royal Liverpool University Hospital with a fractured skull, bleeding on the brain, a broken shoulder, and complete paralysis from the waist down. Over the next 12 months, Ian fought for his life and then fought to adapt to a new reality. The accident stole his independence, his career, and his ability to care for his four children. He would never walk again. Nurses and doctors became his daily companions. Despite the trauma, Ian later reflected, if it happened a day later, it would have been somebody else. Inside Chandler's Wharf, the devastation was immediate and terrifying. The eight counterweights from the crane each weighing several tons, had crashed through the building, tearing a vertical path through six floors. In that moment, the building's main stairwell disappeared, leaving residents trapped in their apartments. Many tried their doors and found them jammed shut by twisted frames and fallen debris. For those on the upper floors, their only escape was the balcony. 
Firefighters arrived quickly, deploying ladders to reach stranded residents. Dozens were guided to safety, some carrying pets or clutching only what they could grab in seconds. The entire 64-unit apartment block was evacuated. More than 100 people were suddenly homeless, forced to leave behind their belongings, their routines, and the sense of security that comes with a stable home. The physical injuries were limited to Ian Gillam, but the emotional toll spread far wider. Families scattered across temporary accommodation, some waiting nearly two years before they could return. The collapse fractured a community and left scars that would outlast the repairs. For many, the memory of that day is etched in the sound of falling steel and the knowledge that a few minutes difference could have turned survival into tragedy. On July 6, 2009, at midday, a 200-ton crane crashed through Chandler's Wharf, destroying homes and leaving crane operator Ian Gillam paralyzed. Investigators found that all four foundation piles had been weakened. Critical steel bars were deliberately cut, with only four to five reinforcement rods left per pile. Court documents confirmed these shortcuts were authorized to save time and money, directly causing the collapse. Over 100 residents were evacuated from 64 apartments, but no tenants were physically injured. Legal proceedings revealed a clear chain of responsibility. Bomer and Kirkland, and structural engineer Bingham Davis, were both convicted of safety breaches, fined 280,000 pounds, and ordered to pay substantial costs. Despite the evidence presented, the full decision-making process behind the unauthorized modifications remains partially undisclosed in official records. Today, UK law requires stricter third-party verification of crane foundations. The King's Dock Mill collapse stands as documented proof that even minor unauthorized changes can lead to life-changing disaster. The cost of cutting corners was not just financial, it altered lives and reshaped construction practice across the United Kingdom.